Happy Mother's Day, Relevant Kingdom Center. And to those of you who are watching online, I want to wish all of our moms a happy Mother's Day. And of course, I would have to wish my mother, my birth mother, my strong, godly mother a happy Mother's Day. I thank God for her. If it wasn't for her in my life, I would not be standing here today. So mom, I'd like to say happy Mother's Day and I love you. And so today we are in a new series called Not Today Satan. And I am excited because there's a lot of knots I want to tell Satan. Um, somebody, come on. If you feel me, just lift those hands and say, I know that's right. All right, I want all of us all over the sanctuary just to stand. If you're there in the Bahamas, please stand with me. We are going to get into the Word of God today. And I believe God has something that He would like to share. If you are watching online, I just want you to turn to Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. If you're in the sanctuary, it will come across the screen. And so, Exodus 1, verse 15 says, The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shipra and Pua, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. And if I could tag a topic to the message, it would be not today, Satan, not my child. Bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that we are going to glean from your word today of how to, oh God, cover our children and how to be the mothers and the parents that we need to be. I pray that you will let your words be edifying to our spirit today. Not my flesh, but you, oh God, speak through me in Jesus' name and let everyone say amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary. So as mothers... God has placed in us a unique desire to unify our homes, to be a guide, to be a nurturer, a builder, and an encourager. But I do have to say that as mothers, without all that good stuff, you know, we, we also have that tendency to get real vicious and real fierce, real quick, especially when it comes to our children. Anybody can testify to that. I know a couple uh, of instances that someone tried to mess with my child or mess with one of my boys, and it was probably at school, and I, I got really upset, really aggravated, really quick, and I switched really fast. And it doesn't take a lot, moms. It doesn't take a lot for us to get really protective over our kids. You let someone look at your child in the wrong manner, and you are ready to take the earrings off, you got the Vaseline and the grease, and you are ready to throw hands. Come on, somebody. We ain't always been saved, all right? And, and listen, I'm a work in progress, baby. I, I don't get per perfection until I get to heaven. So you miss and come at my child or anything or anybody in my family the wrong way, and you're going to see me out of pocket real quick. But thank God for grace. Come on, somebody shout, thank God for grace. We are under the blood and we are under grace, right? Um, but it doesn't take a lot for us to, to feel that protective instinct when it comes to our kids, even in nature you find that the females are usually very aggressive when it comes to her, their young, even sometimes uh, more than the males. And so God has put that in us, uh, women. God has put that in us. And so here we are, backtracking to Exodus 1, uh, verse 15 to 17. We're going to take a look at a mother who was very exceptional, and there's not a lot about her, but within this story, and you may know her, um, she, she exemplified a lot of characteristics that I want us to take from today. And so here in our main text, we see that the king of Egypt was talking to the Hebrew midwives. And their names were Shifra and Pua. And some say um, that Shifra was the name Jokobet or Yokovet in Hebrew. And so the king of Egypt was like, listen, I need you to kill the Hebrew males. And why? Just for some historical context, you see Joseph, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob um, were the forefathers of Israel. And so Jacob, we know the story of Jacob, right? He had 
uh, 11 other brothers. It was 12 of them. And so Jacob favored Joseph. Sorry. Jacob favored Joseph. They threw him into the, the pit, the palace, and sold him into slavery because his brothers were jealous. And so Jacob ended up in Egypt, and he ended up ruling next to Pharaoh and saving the Egyptian empire from famine. And so Joseph was really favored by God, and he was a, a, a leader in Egypt. And so he brought his family, ultimately brought his family back to Egypt to live. And that was the 12 tribes of Israel. And so the Hebrew nation began to grow and began to prosper. And so here we see when, when Joseph died and Pharaoh died, there was another Pharaoh that rose up that did not know Joseph and did not respect the contributions that Joseph made to the Egyptian empire. And so he began to become intimidated by the Hebrews. Come on, somebody. I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. He became intimidated by them. And he said, they may rise up. And so we have to do something about this. So he put the Hebrews into slavery. So he enslaved them. And then he said, listen, this, this, should, this should squash them. But how many of you know that the devil is intimidated a lot of times by what God has put on the inside of us? Come on, somebody. And so he began to... Uh, 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 put them into hard, harsh labor. And so when that didn't work, he, they began to multiply again. And when that didn't work, he said, okay, I got to take another approach. And so he got the midwives because he thought that if he could get to the midwives, he can get directly to the seed of the Hebrews and the children of the Hebrews. And so, like I said, the enemy is afraid of what God has placed on the inside of us. Come on. You know you got some visions, you've got some dreams, and your children are a part of you. They are your seed. And so the enemy has an onslaught attack against our children, against our seed. And so he is going to be relentless about pursuing the, the, the children that we have and our families and to put a stop to the destiny that they have over their life. But how many of you know that when the devil has a plan, God has, has an even better plan? So he may have an agenda, but God has a plan, and he already had a plan in place. Come on, somebody. I'm so grateful that God did not leave us without a plan. And so here we see in the text that the Hebrew midwives, it says they feared God. And so they did not do what Pharaoh had asked. They said... Listen, we, we fear God more than the king, and so we have to honor God. And so what they did was is that they let the boys live. They let them live. And so here we see where Jochebed is the mother that we are going to talk about today. I want to pull out some principles from Jochebed because Jochebed was the mother of Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. And she was born at the border of Egypt. And the, the, she was said to be the midwife. Jochebed was born at the border of Egypt. And she was said to be one of the midwives. And so here she is in this dilemma between following the orders of the Pharaoh or following the laws and honoring her God. And how many of you know that sometimes we can come into conflict with what the word of God says because we're being pulled in other directions out there in the world. But we need to stand firm, mothers. We need to stand firm as parents and make sure that we are following the word of God and honor him ultimately in everything that we do, in every decision that we make. Somebody shout, honor God. Come on, if you're watching in the chat, shout, honor God, and type that in the chat. So number one, Jochebed had a plan because here she is now, and she was married to a son of Levi. So their household was a Levitical household. It was a, a, of the priests of Levi, and she was a daughter of Levi. She was actually the granddaughter of Jacob. And so she's come from this Levitical order. And so they knew all about the laws and all the practices of the Hebrews and, and, and the culture and the priestly order of their, their people. And so 
she is in this predicament because she is a strict follower of the laws of God. And so she is now pregnant with Moses. She's pregnant with him. And now she's afraid because of the law that the, the Pharaoh had decreed to kill all the baby boys. And so this is what she did. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1, verse 2. It says, now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, somebody say fine. Come on, say it again, moms. You know, you love your children. Say, my baby is fine. <laughs> this is what she did. She hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. So number one, the number one thing that we have to be as mothers and as parents, we have to be prepared. Jochebed was a prepared mother. She realized that she had to find a place for her child. So she prepared not only one place, but two places. She prepared uh, a place to hide him in the house because you had the, the, the Egyptians bursting into the Hebrews' homes, looking and digging for these children because they knew that they had these children in there. And so she hid him. And thank God that they didn't find him. But then as he grew older and older, she had to find another place for him. And so she basically made a little ark, a little ark to put her sweet little baby in. Can you imagine having to give up something that is precious to you? How many of us have, have experienced giving up something that's precious and losing something that we love? Now, get in touch with the feelings of this mom because she had to literally give up her child. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to a mother who had to give up their child for adoption. Or maybe I'm talking to a mother who had to allow another family member to raise their child because they were in some hardship. And I want to encourage you today that just because you put your child in the hands of someone else, doesn't mean that you're a bad mother. I want to speak to someone who may be feeling any guilt or any condemnation. Say, baby, it's okay, because God has got your child covered. And so here it is, Jochebed is faced with giving up her child. And you see, we as mothers, we always have to be ready. Someone shall always be ready. We have to be on the offensive because the enemy is looking. He is looking just for a crack. He is looking just for a little entryway into our homes and into our lives. And so we have to be prepared in order to keep our family and our children safe. And so we have to begin to get into that mindset of the offensive. You know, we're always thinking of, oh, yeah, when, when something happens and then we will do. No. We have to be prepared. We have to be on the offensive. Someone say, say the offensive. Come on, type offensive in the chat. And this brought to my mind that our leader here in the United States, Joe Biden, has now is talking about reinstating the Roe versus Wade abortion rights for women. How many of you know that is definitely a diabolical scheme of the enemy to kill and to murder our children? We are waging war. And so moms, I want to encourage you. You got to pull up your, he your high heels and maybe even take your high heels off and put on some boots. And listen, you're going to have to get down and dirty. And listen, we're going to have to continue to fight the good fight of faith for our children. Not just in church, not just in spiritually, but politically. We can't let our children fight alone in the system. And so if you are in the United States, and even if you are in the Bahamas, which is a God-fearing nation, I dare you have to be involved. Be involved as a mom, not just in the church, but in your community, in your schools. Continue to fight and to push for God's word to be held as a, as a high honor in, in the world that we live in because our children are fighting demons and devils, and they have to be covered. Someone shout, covered. Come on, I need to hear you. Someone shout, covered. And so Jochebed was prepared. And so we have to be prepared. 
Number two is that Jochebed was positioned. She positioned the right people around her. Now we're going to take a look at Exodus chapter two, verse four. She positioned the right people around her. It says his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. And we know the story of Moses. So after she put him in the basket, Miriam took a little watch for her brother. And so it says that she placed him among the the aisle, the reeds, along the banks of the Nile River to see what would happen to him. And so Miriam was there watching to see what would happen to her brother. How many of you know that you can't place your children in anybody's hands? Come on now. You have to be careful who you place around your children, the environment that you create, what you have around your home and around your kids, what you are allowing your children to be exposed to. You have to be careful of that. And, and she didn't just ask anybody or any random person to go and watch her child down the Nile River. No, she had Miriam, who was also very smart, very wise, and very persuasive, as we're going to see. And so I want to challenge you that we have to position our children, number one, in the right direction. Because she didn't just put him in the middle of the, uh, the Nile River. She put him on the lo- along the side, along the banks. And so she had a specific direction that she put her child in. And she allowed Miriam to go and watch her. She sent her to watch her. And so a lot of times, moms, we have to align our children in the right direction. They need our guidance. They need our direction. They need direction and guidance from the right people. And so you can't just have everybody speaking into your children's life. You can't just have everybody wanting to to guide your child and take your child. And even like growing up, I never used to sleep over a lot of people's house. My parents were old school. And so they never allowed me to go out to anybody's house and just have a random sleepover. And today's culture, you can't do that because you don't know who you're sending your child to. Come on, somebody. Your discernment has to be up. Moms, let me tell you this. We are intuitive. And so our discernment needs to be sharp. Our discernment needs to be on point. And so we have to provide that direction for our children. Come on, speak into their lives. If you see that they are gifted in a certain area, come on and speak into that to, and that for them and, and groom that in them. Encourage them in their gifts. Encourage them in their talents and their abilities. My children love to play basketball, but not all of them. One or two like to play basketball. The twins love track. I mean, so we have to guide them in that. We can't discourage our kids. If you see that they love to sing and they're taking up a microphone at the church and they're going on the, the drums or they're into music or whatever it is they're into, a lot of our kids are very dramatic. And so maybe they need to be a public speaker or something, but be sensitive. The the, the thing is be sensitive and be discerning about who your children are because God has put that in us. And so we have to prayerfully position our children in the right direction. Amen, somebody? Come on. Somebody shout, position your child. And so here is Miriam taking watch over Moses. And so, like I said, Miriam was very wise and she had the gift of persuasion. And so she knew how to use every obstacle as an opportunity. So she sees Pharaoh's daughter bathing along the Nile. And Pharaoh's daughter saw the child. And so what did Miriam do? She immediately, she ran to Pharaoh's daughter and said, I know a wet nurse. I know someone who can nurse this child for you. And immediately she took action. And she did not wait. And so the Pharaoh's daughter ultimately said, okay, go and bring the the wet nurse to me. She didn't know that it was Moses' mother. And so she was used by God in that moment to make the obstacle an opportunity. And I want to encourage us today that we are faced with many obstacles as mothers, many obstacles as parents, many obstacles as believers. But how many of you know that God can turn every obstacle into an opportunity? Come on, somebody. Every crisis can be an opportunity for God to get glory in our life. Come on, somebody shout glory to God. 
because he's going to use that crisis. He's going to use that situation. He's going to use that obstacle as an opportunity. If we are wise and if we are diligent and if we are discerning and if we are bold, because Miriam was bold. She did not care that she was going to be seen. She did not care if she was going to be questioned by, by the Egyptian princesses and, and those around her. She could have been killed. She could have been taken into slavery or captured, but she was bold. And so I want to declare boldness into all of our mothers today. I want to declare a spirit of boldness because we need to be bold as a lion when it comes to our children. We need to make every obstacle an opportunity. Come on, somebody, sh somebody shout amen. Somebody in the chat shout opportunity. And so she positioned her child in the right direction. And then she positioned the right people around her child. And so Jacobed, number three, was not only prepared. Somebody shout prepared. She was not only positioned or positioned her child in the right place, but she was also persuaded. Somebody shout persuaded. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you persuaded? I know we came out of a series just now, but, but listen, this is just confirmation that we need to be persuaded. What was she persuaded about? You see, Jacobet trusted God. She trusted God not only with her life, but she trusted God with the life of her child. And there was a story that I wanted to share because I found this to, to hit home to me. And so my son, my oldest son, Damari, is getting ready to graduate, and I'm so excited. We're all excited in the house right now because graduation is around the corner. Um, it's an emotional time as well. But he had asked to go to his senior trip, and it was gonna be at Universal Studios. <laughs> and he asked for months in advance. And so mentally, I was being prepared for this time. And we're a little bit you know, protective over our children. We just don't let them randomly go places without us. And this was pretty far. But I said, okay, you know what? I know Damari's getting older and he's becoming of age. And so we have to kind of like, you know, let that umbilical cord, you know, stretch a little further and, and eventually we're gonna have to cut that. And so I said, okay, no problem. You know, I asked him all the questions. Who's gonna be there? Is there gonna be anybody chaperoning? What time is it gonna be? And so as the days progressed and it got closer to that time, I started getting a little bit anxious. And so... <laughs> I said, I don't know. I don't know if I want you to go. Um, he's like, Mom, come on. Like, you can't baby me forever. And so a lot of times, parents, moms, we tend to be so protective of our children. But this is a lesson that we are going to have to learn in every season. And no matter what it is and what age our children are, we are going to have to ultimately release them to God. Come on, somebody shout release to God. We are going to have to let them go. You know why? Because they don't belong to us. Our children were gifted to us from God. They are a gift. They're a, they're a treasure. And we are supposed to nurture them for a season. And then we give them back to God. And so they, they will always be our children. But guess what? They belong to God. And so there's a time when you're going to have to learn to let go and trust God. And so God had to check me and say, Either you don't trust your child or you don't trust me. And I got convicted and I said, God, you know what? I trust you. I trust that you're going to take care of my son, that no matter where he goes and no matter what lurks outside, that you're going to keep him safe from danger. And I'm going to trust the teaching that I put in my child. And so when it came time for the, the trip to Universal, I didn't even really have to ask Damari, but he messaged me. Even though I did tell him, you know, message me, let me know you're safe. But he messaged me on his own. And I didn't have to prod him and message him every minute. He let me know he was okay. And so it's just like us as ch children of God. We, we tend to hold on to what's comfortable. We tend to hold on to the things that, that, you know, we're afraid to let go of. And God is saying, just open your hand and let go. You have to give back to me your child. And ultimately, that's what Jochebed did. She trusted God enough to let her child, her baby, go into the river. There are alligators in the river. There's dangers in the river. And they, they, he, Moses could have been eaten alive. He could have drowned. But she was wise. And she had other people 
taking watch over her child. And so it's not just to be foolishly, okay, go ahead and go, go drive and go drive to your friend's house and, and go across the state. But no, there's guidelines. And, and, but it's ultimately trusting God to keep your children safe. And so I want us to learn that we have to, number one, we have to be prepared. Number two, we have to position our children and position ourselves and position other people around our children to keep watch over them, to guard them, to direct them in the right way. And then we have to be persuaded. Come on, if you don't believe that God can keep you, then what are you in this for? If you don't believe that God can keep your children, what are you praying for? And I believe that she not only was persuaded, but she was a mother that prayed. She was a woman of faith. She knew about prayer. She knew about her God. And so she trusted God to the point that she said, God, you got this. Come on, somebody shout, God, you got this. Come on online. Say, God's got this. God's got me. God's got me no matter what situation I face. God's got my children no matter who they are, no matter what hell is breaking loose in my life right now. God has got this. And I just want you to declare that over your life. And so we can learn from Jochebed that we have to begin to trust God. We have to be wise. And so ultimately, the end of the story is this, that Pharaoh Pharaoh's daughter gave her back to her mother. And so it says in the scripture of Exodus 2, verses 9 to 10, it's going to come across the screen. It says, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. Okay, let's stop right there. I think I mentioned this before, but God will ultimately have the enemy fund your vision. Come on, somebody. God would make the enemy pay. For everything that he has done wrong in your life, he's going to make the enemy pay. Somebody shout, he's going to pay for it. Come on, somebody. He's going to pay for it. You're not going to have to take any money out of your pocket. God is going to bless you and bless your house for your faithfulness and for your faith and for your sacrifice. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs this word today because you've been struggling. You've been challenged. You've been fighting. You've been scared. And you not knowing where the ends are going to meet. But God says, I am going to fund the vision. I am going to allow the enemy to fund that vision in your life. And so Jochebed got paid to take care of her own child. My God, I I need that job like that. We got these stay-at-home moms. Hats off to you. God bless you, moms, that sacrifice every day, day in and day out, and they stay home with their children, but they're not really getting paid. The ultimate payment is to see your child successful in life and see them follow Christ. But they're not getting paid, but Jochebed was getting paid. Somebody shout paid. So the woman talking about Jochebed, took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. Now listen, this was a time that Jochebed had with her child that she would not have had if she had not sent Miriam to tell Pharaoh's daughter about her. And so this was a story that God weaved together so perfectly. And how many of you know that Moses was such a great leader? He was one of the greatest prophets in Israel. And so this time in a child's life, from infancy to when they were weaned in Hebrew culture, was very, very important. And it said that the Hebrew, Hebrews weaned their children. It could have been from 18 months old up to all the way up to five years old. So Moses potentially, potentially potentially would have been maybe five or six years old before he went back to Pharaoh's house. And so this was a time that Jochebed had with her son to put and instill in him the morals and the principles and the word of God. How many of you know that that's how God works? So God rewarded her for her sacrifice. God rewarded her for her faithfulness. And so she had that time and that that moment to spend, that season to spend with her baby, to put in him the word of God, to put in him the traditions, to sing to him the, the Hebrew songs that told stories of who, how great God was. And so moms, listen, we only have a certain time frame with our children. 
I'm like in awe as, at, at how fast time has gone. And now I have a high schooler who's getting ready to go to college. I mean, I was just talking the other day to my husband. I'm just saying like time has flown so fast. And then we got three others coming right behind him. So we only have a season. Somebody says a season. Moms, we only have a, sp a particular season with our children. It is our responsibility to take advantage of the time that we have with our children. You can't waste time playing around. You can't waste time ignoring them and letting other people uh, watch your child for hours and days and, and not pouring into them. And it is our responsibility as Christian mothers, as believers, as parents, even if you're not a woman or a mother, but you're a parent, you need to put into them everything that God says to put into them. Teach them the word of God. Cover them in prayer. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to be givers, how to be tithers. Teach them the principles of the word of God so that when they are older, they will not depart from it. This is our role as mothers, to teach our children. And so I was so blessed when I got to this point because I said, my God, you set her up. You set Jochebed up and she was able to have that time with him that she would not have had. And not only that, but he was entrusted into a king's palace. I mean, he was favored. So he could have gone anywhere else. He, he, caught, he could have gone to another Egyptian woman. But guess what? Guess who he went to? He went to the house of Pharaoh. It was royalty. It was a kingship. And so he became a king's son because he was a leader. And so there are children that we have in our homes, our own personal children, but we also have children around us. You may not be a mother. You may not have been a birth mother, but guess what? God still has called you to be a mentor, to be a teacher, to be a, a role model to the children that God has placed around you, to be that elevator in someone's, in that child's life. Because guess what? We are speaking to the influencers and to the history makers of the future. Come on, somebody. You look at the children around you today, and I want you to say, what is it in them that I can pull out, that I can help to cultivate in them? We are called to raise up godly families. And as I close, I just want to leave that with us today. Moms, we are called to raise up godly families. We are called to raise up godly children. And we are called to cover our children from the hands of the enemy. We have got to fight and we have got to be on the offensive because they are the next generation. They are the future leaders of the next generation. And God wants to use them to make an impact. But the devil has an assignment and he has an agenda. And we have to be bold as women. We have to be bold and fearless. And we have to be fierce in order to thwart the attacks of Satan in our child's life. If you see them playing the fool, come on, just plead the blood of Jesus over them. Come on, don't get discouraged. Don't get frustrated. Sometimes we just need to stop, drop, and pray. Come on, someone. Say stop, drop, and pray. I'm talking to your mom online. You're getting frustrated about your child. You don't know what to do, but the Lord says to tell you to stop, drop, and pray. Come on, we need to take that today. Stop, drop, and pray. Come on, put those hands together if you believe that God is going to do a work in your child's life. Hallelujah. And so all over the building, I want you just to stand with me. I want to pray for the mothers. And if you're online, I just want you just, just to put your hands toward the screen. Because God has called us, this is my bottom line, God has called us to cover and protect our children at all costs. Somebody shout, at all costs. So no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what the sacrifice, no matter what the danger, God has called us to be intercessors and to be a covering for our children. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every mother in here today. I thank you that, God, you are going to give us the grace and the strength that we need to raise up a godly generation, to raise up godly children, godly seed. And Father, I thank you that, Lord, that we will not be afraid of the terror by night. We will not be afraid, Father God, because we know that you have got a plan and you have had a plan in place 
before they were born in the room. Father God, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, before I knew them, I predestinated them and I have a plan for them. And so God, every child, every family, every mother represented here, listening under the sound of my voice, I cover them under the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you are going to give them the strength, the wisdom that they need to be persuaded, to be prayerful, and to position their children in the right direction, to position other people around them, to lead them in the right direction direction to always be ready always be prepared father i thank you that we will not sleep we will not slumber until we see our children raised in the right direction father we thank you that you've got them in jesus name everybody shout amen and amen how many of you know that it takes a village to raise a child come on so i want you to turn to your neighbor and say neighbor i need your help i need your help come on turn to your other neighbor and say neighbor I need your help. Come on, put those hands together and bless the Lord with me. Come on, somebody needs to say, not today, Satan, not my child. Come on, because we got, God's got them covered and we're going to keep them covered too in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on, I just want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day once again. And as I call up the service host, I want you to enjoy the rest of your Mother's Day, moms. I know you're looking absolutely beautiful. Those of you online, you are looking absolutely wonderful. I am sure of it. So take pictures, kick your feet up, and have a wonderful Mother's Day. God bless you.